So, oh, hi. <laughs> like I got the pop up like right after I said hello. <laughs> hey, y'all. It's Thursday. Hello. I'm not alone today. <laughs> Nicole's here. Oh, wait, I'm hello. It, right? The mirroring. <laughs> hello, yeah. everyone. Hey, 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 guys. What's up? How's it going? Happy Thursday. Happy Medical Billers Network Live Day. We have Nicole in the house. So when I say, Nicole says, I can be like, she says, or wait, she says, <laughs> point in the other direction. <laughs> Live criticism from my behind the scenes notes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's gonna be like, yes, I do. I do say that. You are right, Jasmine. <laughs> so today we're excited about our conversation. We are talking about a topic that you guys ask about a lot. And so we're like, we need to really lean into these conversations about interviews and hiring and try to help you guys get a little bit more savvy with how to get the job. So um, maybe you're looking, maybe you're in the kind of process of possibly exploring other options, other opportunities out there. So today is going to be a great conversation. Maybe you just got hired and you are a master of this because you have weeks and weeks or months and months of experience in kicking butt at interviews. Today is your chance to shine and share all of your knowledge with us. Um, so while you're here, let us know that you are. Say hello in the comments. Um, tell us that you are here. And today's question of the day is, are you currently looking for a job? Um, and if you want to share what you're looking for, feel free. I mean, what's the worst thing that happened? Someone could see your name. So I like it. OK, hey, Christy. On a vacay in NJ, got back from Hurricane Harbor. I don't even know. I don't know what that is. Is that a place? Is that like a venue? Because it's not a name, right? <laughs> like, or is that like, know, like Tornado Alley? Like, is that maybe Hurricane, you know, like Tornado Alley is like a area with a, that has, okay. Oh. oh, it's a place in New Jersey. Okay. When I look I, it up, it just gives me six flags like the water park. So. Oh, oh that's probably what it is then. Yeah. That makes sense. That sounds perfect. I actually love water parks, Nicole. Do you are you a water park or an amusement park girl? I, I guess I do like the water park, but every time I go, it rains. So I'm bad luck. Don't go with me. <laughs> I won't invite you to the water. Be like, hey, you guys, we never want to invite Nicole to the water park. We just need to like happenstance that we're there and she just sneaks in. Like, <laughs> okay, I was right. Her. I'm not crazy. So it is okay. a water park, not a place. Cool. <laughs> it actually would totally make sense. So it's so funny. Like, I was thinking of it. You know, like. Tornado Alley is where a bunch of tornadoes happen. It's like Hurricane Harbor would be like where there's a bunch of hurricanes. Like That's what I thought. Like just, I don't know. <laughs> That's what you would think anyway. But I actually like the name. So uh, Hurricane Harbor is a cute name. And I love water parks um, way more than amusement park. Like I'm not. Oh, really? Mm. <laughs> As I've gotten older, I've gotten more boring and maybe not so chancy. I've been working on it. Like this year is like, you know facing fears. So maybe you'll get me on a non kids roller coaster. Maybe. <laughs> Again, uh, we, we live in North Carolina. So we have carowinds. Um, have you been on the fury, which is the biggest one they have right now? Me? me? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. When's the last time you stopped riding roller coasters? I hardly it's not even. New. <laughs> <laughs> my How mom's been on it. She's afraid of heights. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my gosh. No, I haven't. <laughs> I have not even. I think that I have watched people on those rides. So is that the one that goes under the path? Yes. Uh huh. You first walk kind of in. Definitely heard the screams. <laughs> Definitely said, I will not be riding that. And <laughs> 100% certain. That's so fun. Hey, Mohammed's in the house. Ellen's here. What's oh, up? Hi, Mohammed. So nice What's to be up? included. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're so happy that you're here. We're not happy that your internet is decided. We were in, we were in a call before this, and internet was fine. And now we're <laughs> we're live, and Nicole's freezing a little bit. Great. Your audio sounds great, but you're just sometimes well, that's good you know, giving us your perfect <laughs> little profile, you know. <laughs> I, I love going back and getting the timestamps for these and seeing myself go like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's great. I know. It's amazing these days, like how, how awful the internet can be at like times that you think that no one is using the internet, but I guess people are at home streaming and things right now. They're like, hey, it's time to watch, catch up on Ted Lasso or whatever. <laughs> See, my boyfriend got home from the gym, so we'll blame him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. That's what it is. <laughs> They're like, hey, he should be watching us. He shouldn't be watching anything. Else. <laughs> 
I love it. All right. So today, you guys, we are talking about interviews and hiring process. If you are already work in a position that you love, but you have expertise and you can share that with others. We would love to hear your input. We'd love to have your questions if you have questions. Um, we did get this topic from a lot of questions that have come in. So I'm pretty excited to share the cool thing about today's dynamic, which Nicole's fun little idea with her thumbnail with <laughs> is because we're talking from both sides of the coin. We have myself as a hiring manager for a lot of years now. I don't know, a lot of years because I did it even before I had my company. So I guess like 24 years or so of hiring experience. And then we have Nicole um, on the interviewing side. Like years inter of job application experience. <laughs> yeah. Best part is I think one of our questions recently was like, you know, just getting out of school, just getting out of, you know, studies or getting a, you know, a degree and can't find some, you know, and that's Nicole's totally got she knows that world. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's going to share all of the things and we get to kind of talk through like what really, what's the best practice for, for y'all that are looking for positions and what are the things that we um, recommend you try today, maybe before you even go to sleep tonight. So, um, so before all of that, I've got to do what Nicole says, <laughs> what she says I have to do. So I'm going to um, pop this baby up there. So this week we just talked about it. So um, this week, ultimate hiring showdown. So we're going to talk, like I said, both sides of the coin from the from the hiring manager's perspective and the perspective of someone who's looking for a job seeker, someone who's looking to be hired. Um, last week, we talked about billing and coding jobs that you can rely on. So job market, we discussed um, basically things to whether or not healthcare is uh, recession proof and ways that you can kind of make yourself recession proof personally um we're bef we we're we're before that no the week before that <laughs> we talked trivia um this past week we did trivia and i was actually the the co-host with miss nicole and um we're excited because we had some great winners and you guys were amazing so continue to come back that trivia party if you have not been a part of it is always the first thursday of every month you get a chance to win moolah which is money if anyone knows what that is. So come, come in. Uh, if you're not a gangster and you don't know what moolah is, <laughs> you can come back and win some money. Um, all right. So if you are new here, hello, welcome. This is Medical Billers Network Live. We are a program of Inlara University or Inlara U here on YouTube. And we are also um, offering classes and other things, but just know that on this space, our goal is to offer content education for to help you guys in the business side of healthcare, help to eliminate the stress and confusion. So uh, if you have not subscribed yet, consider doing that and make sure that you hit that little bell so that you get notified when we go live, like today, it will just send you an email or send you a little ping on your phone to tell you, hey, you don't want to miss this. And that way you get a chance, especially during trivias, you want to make sure you catch the live because if you don't get on the trivia um, program, the live doesn't give you, you won't get the code, you won't be able to play, and then you won't get any moolah. <laughs> now you guys know what moolah means. So I'm just going to say that. <laughs> All right. So if you are new here, please like, subscribe, and make sure that you um, say something in the comments and let us know what you're interested in. In addition to free stuff that we do here, just posting videos and talking to you guys here on live streams, <clears throat> excuse me, we also have different types of courses. So one of our first types of courses is self-paced courses. And on the screen is an example of a self-paced course, medical office reception. This is someone, this is a course that is created for someone who is interested in entering into the world of healthcare, perhaps in a different avenue of the revenue cycle than maybe going deep dive into billing. So let's say you took the billing 101 course with us and you're like, I kind of like this concept of healthcare on the business side, but I think I'd like to start with something that's familiar because I have customer service experience. This is a perfect position for you because it is the, the um, face of the practice, right? When you go to your practice to see your provider, your, your um, healthcare provider, that per provider's front desk person or the receptionist that you speak to over the phone, that person is a medical office receptionist. So this course is going to help prepare you for that and to prepare you to be an excellent team member, which is why we call this medical office. It's, we call it more medical office reception. Excellence is the name. 
All right, next is our instructor-led programming. So Mastering Medical Billing is our full program. It is a 16-week course. When we say instructor-led, that means that you are working alongside the instructor. Um, at that time, this is me, actually. Medical Mastering Medical Billing is our comprehensive course that will prepare you for being a biller in a medical practice or in a physician-based practice right now okay so this is our you're coming in you ain't got no experience you're starting from ground zero or you would like to maybe learn more about billing to potentially explore getting a certification or to expand on a role that you already have as a receptionist or something else in the practice all right our next start date for the course is september 25th so be sure to take a look ask questions uh you can always send us emails that's learn at inlara dot com learn l e a r n at inlara dot com if you have any questions about any of the courses and we are done let's get ready to rumble funny that you that you put this nicole like i'm wondering if you even know who <laughs> the boxing um announcer who says this i grew up with his voice and i can't i cannot think of his name i'm sure steve's gonna tell us because <laughs> i watched boxing as a kid constantly so um with my dad with my dad so <laughs> um so yeah so boxing is uh is still a favorite for, of mine uh, michael buffer there we go yes and his brother his brother kind of says it too he does mma though i think right <laughs> I don't know. I was a big, um, my family is big into WWE, which is like the really flashy fake wrestling. I, some people get mad about that, but it, it is scripted. It is pretty fake, but it's really interesting, like fun to watch. Or it was, I haven't watched it in a while. Nice. My brother was big into like John Cena. I know he, he was a meme. Now he's an actor. It's all weird. So is he The Rock. A, a lot of them go into <laughs> acting. It's... That's yeah, well, another... they, they started out <laughs> technically acting, right? It's, it's pretty much acting. Here's the deal is if you haven't been to, I'll tell you about it. There's some funny like local ones around here in Charlotte that they do like wrestling um, skits and things like that, which I think is very funny. And it's basically like WWE local version. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. So. I When I worked retail, I used to work with somebody who traveled around doing the announcement stuff for the like the, the, local. the not local wrestling yeah not like like high school wrestling though i think he did that sometimes but yeah, yeah that was like his whole thing he had like a small radio show i think and then he also did um like like ring announcements i was like you go guy like yeah that is so cool i mean it's so interesting like the 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 way that careers can take us you know it's so this is actually like is a perfect segue into today's topic because nicole and i were having this discussion where you know often when we start in the job search or the job market we're looking for something specific we're like they said i should be uh a uh an AR caller, right? Like something very specific. And you're like, you start down the path, you're interviewing for jobs and you find out that, wait a minute, like I'm actually going to be in that field of healthcare, but instead I have a gift for something like financial, uh, patient financial advising, which is like super opposite side. You're talking to patients all day. You're helping them through financial discussions and like helping them be able to figure out how they're going to afford care or ways or options for them to do that. Totally different than something like an AR caller who's arguing with, with, um, with insurance carriers most of the day. Right. So, but that's like, sometimes you sit for an interview and that's the gift is like you walk out and somebody else has seen the gifts that you have better than you saw the gifts that you had. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So Nicole, where do we want to start today? Um, we had a couple things we were going to talk about. Um, there, there's a few places we could start. I felt like it would make sense yeah. for you to go first with like the hiring expertise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'll start with my, my list. So I like that. Hey guys. Okay. Let me say, Hey, Lucy <laughs> Yorker says the likes our new website. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm not sure which one we're talking about though, <laughs> but I guess the, maybe the, the think of big pages. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for that. Or maybe that's Nicole, Nicole's, uh, links pages. That may be. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> hey, Pamela, Linda. Hello. Hello. So good to see you. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I think you just need a break from work. Yay. CPC working lots of overtime. Yeah. Oh, well, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here, Sarah. Great to see you. All right, my friends. So 
when we are talking about this concept of job searching, right? The first thing is we're trying to identify like, where are you getting hung up, right? So if I am searching for a position and I just got my certification or I don't have a certification yet, but I am trying to get my foot in the door to this world of the business of healthcare. And I really just am doing all of the things that I could possibly do. And I'm applying and trying to kind of make the connection. So last week we talked a lot about, you know, using your network and being able to kind of be able to build from the folks that you know and, and in the communities that, that you're involved and try to be known, not just by saying, hey guys, you know, are you hiring? That's that's maybe not always the best thing. It's like creating relationships. And then there's the ask, right? It's like, hey, first make yourself known, like we talked about with the medical billers um, meetup. It's like, if you're asking questions or, or you're having adding value to conversation, or you're on here on the chat and you are constantly here, you've got your name there or in the Facebook group, you're always putting um, responses to questions that come in, people start to know your name. And then when you're like, hey guys, I'm thinking about changing positions or something starting to shift, everyone knows who you are or has seen your name a few times and know that you, you kind of know what you're talking about. There might be an opportunity for those relationships to to build, right? For them to be thinking about you, all right? So um, so first thing is that if you guys are starting for, from, from ground zero, from scratch, the, you want to know what is everyone who does not have, um, who excuse me, who is hiring right now, what are they looking for, right? Um, and so as a hiring manager, we are typically posting a job, a job listing for a role that we have an immediate need for, right? Most companies are not posting cyclical, meaning like there are some companies that keep those, those posts out there year round and they're always hiring but a lot of the small businesses because we pay to pay we pay those organizations zip recruiter and indeed and all these guys we pay to play with those guys okay if we want visibility we actually have to pay to have our listings on those on those sites and so when that when you see a job listing there it's likely that company has invested the money now there are bigger companies that they just have money sitting there anyway they might as well have listings out there but when you see these other practices out there they likely or billing companies are likely have an immediate need so knowing that you want to be the person that is on their mind, the first person that they're thinking about to fill that need. So you, you see the post gets gets listed immediately applying because we're going to start from the top. It's like as hiring managers, the volume can be very high, very fast. So it's so important that you guys want to be on these sites that are going to give you notifications. Um, Nicole, what sites are you used to using? Oh, um, when I was job searching, I was LinkedIn. I know a lot of people like to use LinkedIn, but I found it really difficult because they're like, oh, do the certifications, do the quizzes. But there aren't as many listings, um, at least on LinkedIn. I liked Indeed. Um, have to look up a list because I was on a lot of them. I was on like ZipRecruiter and stuff, but uh, that's where some of my more um, questionable <laughs> interviews came from. So ZipRecruiter and I can't believe Monster.com is still around. Those are ones I would be, Monster I wouldn't even bother with. ZipRecruiter I'd be hesitant about. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I would honestly look up like job sites and then try to narrow down what seems to be more prominent i guess uh like monster.com mm -hmm. at one point was great but at this point people who still use it it's kind of sketchier um mm -hmm. actually one of the things that i was thinking about talking about later today was um trying to see like if you want to work for um previously i worked in retail so if you really wanted to work in like the corporate side of one of those retail you know establishments look up their website and then go to their recruiting their listing and like look through there because usually they'll have stuff that they don't always have listed on those general websites like indeed and i know everyone hates the networking advice i hated the networking advice when i was looking for jobs but genuinely like if you have somebody who works for you know meta and they're a huge company ask them like hey are there any kind of 
reference things that you can kind of put my name in for and see if you can boost me like on some internal things maybe because mm -hmm. every company that's like a big company like meta has their like inside job board and they have usually like the cool jobs over there so <laughs> <laughs> that is such really great advice nicole because they're most companies especially larger um, practices and even hospital systems will post to their inner, their inner, their inside listing or inside, um, uh, their intranet is the word I'm trying to think of their intranet sites first. So they're going to, they're going to post the job listings on a, on a site that's going to make it easier for them to get references or hire from within. So like their first goal is like, who can we hire that's already working for us to promote, right? So that's their first goal. And then the next thing is like, well, who takes the job of the person that's not there anymore, right? That's not in that role anymore. That's an opportunity maybe that you, you know, might be able to slide in, but it's all about like having that kind of that inside view and potentially being able to say, hey, like keep my name in your mind if you see this, right? So just like networking is the thing. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. Networking can totally save you from a lot of stress and heartache, right? You you are you're ground zero if you're networking with with um I mean, excuse me, if you're not networking, like you're you're just like everybody else. When you are networking and someone has said, "Hey, I know Nicole from this, you know, organization or this group or whatever, and I know she's looking for a position. Um, can I give her your email or can, you know, whatever that introduction is, all of a sudden it comes from a familiar face, a familiar individual, and it changes the way they receive that information. Now, it could very well be that, you know, they have you go in to do a typical application process, but now you might have the email contact or the direct um, contact information of that hiring manager that everyone else may just get the general Indeed posting email thing. And most of us hiring managers, uh, to be frank, when the volume grows immediately, like the moment that we open the job listing and we get the flood, the influx of resumes, it's like it's at, we get through as many as we need to be able to start scheduling interviews. And sometimes it could be 50% of that 500. Like we, it can be that many, right? So it's like you go through, we open up, open up a job and you end up getting 500 resumes in the first week, right? we might get through 200 or 250 of those and just reviewing classifying because we do that we'll have to click click through and say this person you know these immediately indeed will do something that we love if you have never seen the um employer side of indeed it uh, gives us the option to ignore anybody who doesn't answer the quizzes or the questions or the um or give a certain number of years if we said we want someone with at least five years of experience and you put three years of experience, we can have those automatically basically go to the trash. Like they go to nowhere land, we don't even see them. So of that 500, we might not even see, you know, one or 200 of those because you didn't answer the questions, you didn't take the, the quiz, you didn't do the, whatever the prereq was for the application process. It can ruin the fact that you even applied for it if you don't take those steps, right? So keep that in your mind is like, it doesn't even come to our desks. And then when we get that volume, we're looking at however many we can get to, to get to fill the schedule of interviews that we have available in that week. So things that change what we are looking for, looking, if we're looking for certification and it says, you know, certification recommended, desired, think words like that, and you have that make sure you have the information in your name. When I see applications that come through or resumes that come through and people have the certifications, they even have like at the bottom of their resume somewhere like, oh, I went to AAPC, you know, for this CPC, 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 yes. <laughs> I was going to say CPCC. <laughs> Thinking about the, there's a community college here called CPC. <laughs> um, you've got a CPC. If you have a CPC, then you need to put that in your name. Don't put it at the, the last page of your resume. It should be in your name somewhere that shows up on our list because when we're looking at the list, we see your name and it doesn't really show us anything else besides that information unless you have unless we're asking for certain areas because it does give us like your um geographic area and things like that as like on our list then you got to click further and actually look at the resumes and things um 
another disqualifier. And I don't know, Nicole, were, were, did you use Indeed, um, Indeed's application process or like their resume builder? Did you use that? I, I did, uh, but I would always submit, uh, I, I'm a little extra, Jasmine knows this, but you all probably don't. You've seen the thumbnails, you probably do. But um, uh, I, I would always use the easy apply because that's usually, uh, from what I could tell, and I'm a nerd, so I like to research stuff. And I was like seeing a lot of um, people who were doing hiring being like, yes, I love easy apply. I get to just skim through, like you were saying with the data banks of like, mm -hmm okay, these are the people that check these boxes. These are who I'm moving forward with. But I was like, I have a pretty resume and I like to submit cover letters because I like to talk. So here's all of my information on top of the easy apply. So you yeah. can learn more about me. And I actually want to jump in real quick before we move on to the easy apply and say that as much as like, if you definitely have the recommended thing, you should totally mention it. If you don't have it and it only says like preferred or recommended, still apply if it's something that you want if it's a job that you want a career you want to get into a, a place you want to work for um i've mentioned a few times before if you are a frequent trivia user um or a trivia player on the channel that i used to work for a vet and i applied because i really wanted to get like in the back and like a hands-on experience and they were like cool you've only worked retail before is it cool if you start as a receptionist and like move on and I was like absolutely I'm willing to learn and uh, I had zero experience with this stuff before I worked with Jasmine so there are a lot of people who are like willing to teach you and kind of like let you learn on the job if you're somebody who seems willing and kind of quick to pick things up so don't be scared by the words recommended or preferred just make sure that you demonstrate that like you're a fast learner you're eager to learn those sorts of things too that is fantastic advice, Nicole. And, and you know, to that point, if you have interest or if you're studying something, like let's say you're in mastering medical billing or you're in, you know, uh, some people hesitate to put that on their education because it's not done and it doesn't have, make sure you're putting like expected graduation date or expected completion date or something like that. Like let, put it on the resume and let people know, like this is something I am working on not, it's not done yet. You might have literally just started, but it's really helpful to know that, okay, like you, you are committed to learning this field and really being well versed in it. Because to Nicole's point, like most of us appreciate when someone has passion for something and that burning desire versus over someone who might have been doing something for a long time but no longer has that fire, right? Is a big difference. It's like, you know, you're going to get someone experienced but they're burnt out and they're like not the nicest and the best and fastest worker versus someone who might have just learned something but catches on to it really fast because they love what they're doing right it's so you, you really have to think about that the the perspective of someone who is willing to teach and nurture there are a lot of programs out there in even large organizations where it is kind of like a um uh, um, a position in training where you're hired on, but you are kind of taken under the wing of someone else in the organization. And a lot of organizations do that really for like the next, we were talking about earlier, like what what's the next role that they might be shifting to? Like they might be taking that individual and promoting them and they need someone to slide into that position and having a mentee kind of on the waiting on the wing that doesn't cost the company a lot of money because if you don't have a lot of experience you're not going to come kind of at that high dollar at someone that has years and years of experience would come in so um cool let's say hello to some people here Nicole. i know your your comment log was backing up <laughs> hey what's up sarah's in the house larissa's here hey let me see my hang up Hold up. Hey, Ellen, my hang up with going into the billing route is that I don't want to deal with patients. I have too many years being yelled at about co-pays and balance. I don't apply for jobs that have listings that listed as a responsibility. Yeah, that's so interesting. How do I tact tactfully ask that question in an interview? Hmm. Is the job patient facing? <laughs> I mean, I would just straight up ask. Like, I wouldn't say it in a way like I, don't I wouldn't really say I hate people. That's not a good way to go about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and, and I would ask questions like, what's expected? Um, like, what are the responsibilities expected? So your your time, I'm just like, you're thinking, I mean, you're in the practice, I imagine, based on what I'm reading. But you know, if you're working in the practice, like, you would literally be able to say, is this is is that particular role patient facing? Meaning, are my sitting down to kind of do some advisement financially to the patients that often is a role like some sort of financial counselors um, that that are in the practice that might be a a secondary role of a biller that's in the practice that's you know absolutely possible so it's important to ask that um if it's a a job that you're working from home you're not you're not necessarily um, patient facing like seeing them face to face to check them out and things like that or as a backup um then you might want to ask like you know what types of responsibilities do i have uh, what I have related to serving patients directly, and you know, just asking the question, not in, not leading with any information other than what am I responsible for when it comes to this, or what would I be responsible for when it comes to this particular area. This is one of my most important tips, you guys. Is when this is a little bit later in our conversation, but when you are interviewing as a job seeker you are also interviewing the company. So when people come to interviews and they have zero questions, <laughs> I'm always like, okay, either you don't have enough experience interviewing or you really don't know what you want. So you haven't established a line of questioning to help you clarify that this position is what you really want. So I would kind of roll it back and say like, sit down with yourself maybe some friends or whatever, have a real conversation about like, what kind of job am I really looking for? Because you need to ask those questions. Like if you are taking all these jobs and you're just like, yes, 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 just because of the money, you might end up at a place that you absolutely despise <laughs> because you said yes to all the things that you really don't want to do, like serving patients, for example. So you need to make sure that you understand the interview is not just one-sided, it is two-way. And it really helps us as hiring managers understand that like you're really engaged. Like if you ask questions, like at the end of the interview and you've gotten a series of questions from, from a hiring manager and they're like, do you have any questions? And you're like, no, <laughs> like really not one, not at all. Like but you don't some know of you guys. It's like, <laughs> Some of you hiring managers, though, are way too thorough and you answer all eight of my prepared questions. So some of you guys shoot yourselves in the foot there. <laughs> that is true. And I will say, <laughs> you know, be like, be straight up. Be like, listen, I actually have a long list of questions and you've been so thorough that you've answered all of my questions. Like I would straight up say that because the fact that you have prepared questions, Nicole, my my favorite nerd, <laughs> is already like, a, you know, like, oh, you've got prepared questions and you have a notebook and a pen, uh, first of all, my friends, <clears throat> or second of all, I should say, really, you're going to interview. Why don't you have pen and paper? You gotta, <laughs> you gotta bring your notebooks. Like, it, no, or something. I mean, and I would disclaim because dis I think Nicole and I, when we first interviewed, she disclaimed. She's like, I just want to let you know that I'm, I'm taking my notes on my phone. Okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you let people know that you're not just texting your friends the whole interview. <laughs> um. Oh, real quick before we move on, though, yeah. I did want to also say another possible way to answer it is I know um, I, I'm a fairly young person who graduated not terribly long ago. So I often get asked to, like, give them a summary of my resume. And it's like, I think officially three jobs now. <laughs> so it's like, well, um, you see, here it is. And that's it. So uh, it, you could kind of tie it into that aspect where you're like, as you can see, I have a lot of front end billing experience where I dealt with a lot of um, patients and blah, 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 list of why you're amazing. And then you can kind of subtly throw in there. And actually, that was part of why I was really interested in this position is the fact that it seemed more back end. I'm really hoping to get more experience in that area or something like that to show that, like, you kind of know what they're doing. You have interest. You know, you're like a go getter. It it makes you look better than being like, please tell me I don't have to talk to people which I understand. I love that I don't have to answer phones at this job. It is my favorite thing that I don't have to directly talk to be three years in retail through the pandemic. I, I want to answer no, no people face to face, none. <laughs> um, and I did like that earlier you asked, you said you had a question, but you didn't want to seem mean by asking it. It is not mean when it comes to you and your career 
to go for things that you want or will make you happy. I was like so worried that like, I, I want to do this general field, but if I don't look at these garbage jobs, then I'm mean to them. And it's like, that's not this interview. You're interviewing them too. If they're not what you're looking for, then they're not a good match and you shouldn't be applying for them. Mm. So you're not mean by asking for things that you want. <laughs> So many great gems, Nicole. I feel like I wish I had like an applause like button. You know? <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Steve is doing like the monkey clap in the back. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> That's so funny. I love it. Okay, let's see. I've been seeing remote jobs business live. Yeah. Hmm. Hasn't been I've been seeing a lot of remote billing jobs since last August. Hasn't been fun or encouraging. Are you looking for something in house? Is that is that um what you're looking for, Linda? I'm curious. I'm very curious. I, I admit I am the weirdo who was not super thrilled about remote jobs because if I don't have a reason to leave the house, it's hard for me to do so. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I understand when everyone's like, yay, remote jobs. And you're like, can I have like a flexible schedule? Can I see people sometimes? Yeah, exactly. It was like a month I where Jasmine wasn't in office. It was so sad. I was like, I'm so lonely. Jasmine, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> I don't like working from, okay, truth, I had been working from home way before the pandemic. And well, I had my, okay, let me explain this. I had my office from my home. If you guys have seen some of our old live streams, I tell the story, um, very different than just working from home because I had a team of people in my home. <laughs> this is very different. <laughs> so it's like, there was no separation, you know, work from home. At that point in time, it was just work. And then my bedroom was back down the hall and whatever. So very different. Um, but what I would say is that um, I absolutely did not like the idea of just being at home 24 seven. I love human interaction. And ideally not just on uh, zoom calls all day long. Um, it was just quite draining. Um, but I do think that if you know you're not into and Linda, just if that's your your point there. If you're not into remote work, be very, be very clear about that. There are a lot of organizations that are not doing remote work hiring these days. Um, interestingly enough, I keep hearing about it constantly, like these companies that are bringing but, but people back in-house, <clears throat> healthcare organizations. And I have my issue with it because I don't like the requirement. I think that financially it doesn't make that much sense for organizations when they're in, especially if they're in bigger cities where it costs them more money and they could have somebody working, you know, in an air, in an area that has a, a reduced cost of living. That's the first thing. But on the side, other side of it is, it's like you, you're losing out on like a bigger, a wider pool of potential people. So making it a requirement makes me go, eh, that's not the best business move. However, I understand businesses and control and them not having the extra headache. And there are a lot of organizations that are hiring in-house. And so when we talked earlier about um, sites, if you know that you're looking for an on-site job and you know that you are not interested in remote billing, I would go directly to local hospital systems or larger practices that you have. On their websites, a lot of them have their own listings. And again, remember I, I mentioned earlier, a lot of the, um, these, these systems charge us as employers to list new jobs. So sometimes people will be like, just put it on their own website and not pay for boosting or they put it on their indeed site and not pay for boosting it's like a there's a way for me to put the job live on my indeed site where people can apply but i have to basically invite them to apply because indeed's not going to like flash that to all the users right it, or i pay and indeed boost it to all the users right so you have to understand that there are people who have internal job listing sites or indeed they're putting it up there and they are just putting the link on their website and they're not necessarily paying a bunch of money. So if you know you want this type of in-house job, then start looking at places that you know that they have teams locally that are close to you that you can go to those particular practices. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me see. I have to go to the directly website. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That's fantastic. Yeah. I always go directly to the websites where you, yeah, that AAPC totally is a great resource for that as well. Um, AAPC and um, some of the other organizations, I haven't really been on AMBAs. I would check maybe those guys too, in case they have um, some listings as well. 
Often in other Facebook groups, people will post when there are new um, jobs that they're uh, about to release, like a hiring manager will post that. Um, and then to Nicole's point about LinkedIn, totally recommend that you stay in LinkedIn and be active on there. Um, and maybe even if it's just like ask, answering questions or, um, or responding to other people's posts, um, just keeping yourself relevant because sometimes those individuals will put up there that, you know, they recently hired or you'll get a, like a notification that they have posted a job on LinkedIn. Um, so let me see. I'm, I've lost where I am with these comments. So, oh, okay. Um, let's see. How will I be searching? Um, let me see. I'm not sure. I feel like that's things. kind of what we were talking about. Yeah, I think so too. I feel like we chatted about yeah, that. So. Searching. Cool. Yeah, uh, the only thing is if you are looking for remote work, and I have to admit, I think maybe we, we misread the, the first comment by Linda because she wanted remote. But if you are looking for remote, be careful because there are some uh, people who are worse hiring managers and they like to go, ah, everyone's looking for remote. And they'll flag something as remote that is not remote or it's like mm -hmm. remote, but only if you live in like New York, it's like, that's not yeah. really remote. <laughs> yeah. So uh, make sure that it is narrowed to like your, your state. If you're here in the U S or if you're in another country, definitely make sure you're looking at the right country because <laughs> I'm sure that there are complications there. I've never had to hire people. Can you tell? But um, <laughs> yes, definitely make sure that uh, if you're looking for remote, that you're not getting tricked into wasting time preparing for an interview and getting all nervous just to realize that, oh, they're only accepting it if you live in Kansas. And you're like, I don't live in Kansas. I'm not moving to Kansas. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And to your point there, there are organizations that only hire in certain states. Um, and, you know, the reality behind that is it, it's a lot of work to hire in a lot of states. It's not an easy thing. And um, tax wise and stuff like that, you have to you have to have payroll accounts in every state. It's a big pain in the butt as an employer. But it's something that, you know, you you'll want to keep in mind that if you're hired, if you're looking to be hired in one of the states that are like maybe in your area, maybe you're like in a tri-state area that you have the options of being there, you know, potentially in that in, in those three areas, make sure you're looking for jobs that are um, geographically um, proximal. I'm looking for, I just, oh, here we go. Yeah, I love what Ellen's saying. I worked really hard for my CCA. He definitely have them hiring in. Yes, exactly. Yeah, totally make sure that you have that. Yeah. Okay, Linda, yes, right, major revisions. Okay, this, let's shift back to some of our points here. So when you guys are looking for your positions, I mentioned to you, like, I've got the long list. My employer list said it's, sometimes we get these job listings and there's like, hundreds of resumes. Two things that will immediately disqualify you. First thing is, as I said earlier, you don't answer the questions that Indeed says, because we usually will put criteria in there that says they have to score at least X percentage over the of the um, assessments. Like, and I usually will put like two or three assessments up there on mine. And it's, you know, typical thing like 70% or 60% or higher or something like that, just so that I, you know, I know that you're not just like, have no clue <laughs> what you're doing um, and sometimes it's they're easy questions to be honest like we if we're using the ones from indeed they're pretty they're fairly easy questions in most cases um there are there are some complex ones for my coders out there that indeed has already some um formulate some formula some formulated questions for coders um but if you skip those you already disqualify yourself the second thing is sending your resume in a very odd format because most of us don't like the risk of clicking on a downloadable web, um, a downloadable document that is going to come to our computer that we can't preview. So Nicole mentioned this earlier, like using the quick apply thing that has some information and doing attachments. So it's like, we know we're not like, you know, clicking on downloading something weird that now is on our computer that we've got to go through like cleanup process for. Um, so do not, Send your Google, your web, your website, your um, resume in a Word document. That is a very, very noticeable. I don't have any experience. Mistake, um, and it is something that really aggravates us as as hiring managers because it means that you're probably 
not making a whole lot of headway in like technology and how you interface with technology. So it, we've clicked on it and we're like, wait, now it comes in a, I just click out of it. I don't even read it. I never do, <laughs> but I'm also a little biased when it comes to technology. Um, I just click away from it. So if you don't know how to convert to PDF, there's a million of different videos I'm sure out there on here on YouTube um, that you could just Google and find out how to do it. Um, but do do both. Do what Nicole said. Have some information there on your on your quick hire thing. I like when people go the extra step and actually provide um, a better looking resume than the basic one that Indeed does. Because sometimes people do the, I guess, and I don't, I, I'm going to be totally frank. I haven't, I have not completed an application on Indeed. I, I don't think I ever have actually. So I don't know what it looks like, but I imagine the questions that they are giving you maybe make you think that like, we know what question you're answering. <laughs> Cause sometimes when I get them, I'm like, that's like a really incomplete sentence. Like, why is it? Why does it just say that they are in the middle of the page? I mean, I'm assuming you were asking, you were answering a question that Indeed was asking you. And it, when it produced the resume for you, it just gave us the unfinished sentence. So it's really important that you understand what the view is. And I'm pretty sure there's a way for you like to preview that. Is there, is there a way for you to preview that, Nicole? Uh, I didn't do the, the, indeed resume just like the indeed easy apply thing so okay. i don't even know because i uh, again extra um i i have a very like specialized uh, kind of um i, I didn't have a ton of experience so i found a way to restructure my resume so it didn't look like you know here's my header here's my experience here's a blank page <laughs> you know um and I guess if you're looking for help, I know there's a ton of like websites for stuff. I'm sure there's lots of little like pockets of the internet of like blogs dedicated to how to build an interesting resume. Um, I'm assuming most people here are probably in like healthcare medical billing, but if you're in like, I don't know, film, maybe you're trying to do like a video resume, that could be fun. Something that's like interesting, but relevant to your yeah sort of job you could even probably pay someone on like fiverr to make like here's my information make it look pretty <laughs> uh yeah. my boyfriend works in tech he like specially designed his and it's all pretty but like you know in a in a nerdy logistical way so <laughs> whatever whatever makes sense for your field obviously if you're going into like finances you probably don't want a bunch of flashy colors and like <laughs> funky fonts <laughs> But totally. And that's fantastic advice. Like really thinking about the, re the, the, um, the audience, right. Um, I love when people are creative and make their resumes stand out. Like I've had some really interesting ones where people have like taglines that underneath their names. So you know how you can put like, um, your certifications or, um, uh, what is that? The, the one liner that says like the job that you are interested in or job seeking. I've had, oh, yeah. I've had people put some really, really interesting one liners that make me giggle or make me like, you know, it's like, those are people that are memorable because they're doing things with intention. And to Nicole's point, we've talked about this in other videos, but in case you haven't seen it, uh, there's some videos that we have talking specifically about ways to stand out when you're job searching. But one of the things we we looked at together on that video was on Canva. Canva is a free site for most um, everyone, as long as you aren't using like their premium images, which if you're making a resume, you're not using <laughs> images. I hope you're not taking someone's random picture and just putting it up there. Um, <laughs> but they have all kinds of resume templates already done on Canva. So all you're doing is going on there, plugging your information in and it's and they're 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 pretty and they look interesting and they um, they give you some kind of a lot of them have all the kind of templated language already up there that you can modify. And to Nicole's point, Googling or searching for things that are relevant to whatever role you're looking for, trying to find out ways to stand out. Um, I was mentioning to Nicole about one of my coaches who is always looking for um, for assistance or people to help her like with digital stuff. And one of her favorite things is to ask for people to record videos, like little, whatever, 10 second videos of themselves. And just like, she wants to see them. 
they're not all, she doesn't hire everybody locally, but she wants to see them and she wants to understand who they are before she even calls them or reaches out to them or does anything. She wants to know whether this person is somebody that she could potentially have a rapport with, like based off of who they are, how, how, what their personality is like. And so it's not even, I think it's like a 30 second video or something she asks for, nothing long. But if you don't follow those rules that she puts, I don't remember what the parameters, she disqualifies you. Like she actually has her assistant filter them. And then she's like, okay, that person doesn't pass if you don't follow these three things that she tells you to do in the video, which is basic stuff, like put your name, say your name, say, you know, what's the job you're looking for and why you think you'd be good hire or something like that. It's, it's straightforward. But if you don't do that, if you don't follow those three steps, she just doesn't even let you continue on. So say that with a, um, a really important, like if you see that they have additional requirements, that you should do, like I mentioned earlier, like take the test or whatever the assessment is that Indeed has, don't skip it because most people have the ability to disqualify you right there at the front. All right. Um, let's see. I have an organized portfolio. I take each interview. Yeah, I love that. My questions are typed out and tailored to each company. I love this. I love this so much. I spent hours preparing for interviews. Helps my confidence on the big interview day. That is such fantastic advice. Like I, Nicole probably has, has more to I, say about this, but I will just say that from a hiring manager's perspective, nothing makes me happier than to see someone who knows my business as like, if you come to the interview and you just don't even know what we do exactly, I'm like, wait a minute. Like you couldn't even go to Google, consult Google gods before you walked in the door. <laughs> You're probably not my person. If I'm looking for someone to do research, like AR follow-up, like it's all, or like appeals, it's all research-based jobs, right? It's all investigative jobs. What we do here in the billing world is all investigative. You can't do that without someone telling you you're probably not the right person for for my business you know but nicole what are you what are your thoughts on that? yeah um i i loved this i actually um i, I called her mvp applicant because <laughs> a perfect example of prepared um definitely depends on like obviously if you're working in like art or something where you need a portfolio or um you know you're trying to get into design or something i mean even some like programming stuff it's all digital but like you know a portfolio can be definitely super important for your job uh what helped me be confident is i had a first interview outfit that i knew i looked like professional in and i felt confident in so i wore it to every first interview sometimes i was the only interview but that's one less decision that i didn't have to make on the day was i knew exactly what i was gonna wear and um also this is a cheat that the hiring managers don't want you to know about so jasmine has to plug her ears but <laughs> if it's a phone interview and there's no video they have no idea that you're looking at notes. You can have, I have two screens. I could have my, I could have their webpage pulled up. I could have my notes that I took beforehand. I could have my resume and then I could have the cover letter I sent or, you know, however you want to divide it up. You could have 17 notebooks laid out with bullet points. That seems a little <laughs> insane, but if that works for you, whatever information helps you be like, these are the things about me that I want to talk about. And, uh, this is what I did early on. <laughs> so I had my laptop open to like Google Docs and I had like, okay, these are the four qualities that I think make me the best person that they're going to interview today. I was being optimistic, <laughs> but I don't think I'm the best person you'll ever interview. But today, today it's me. <laughs> and then um, I had like a couple bullet points from their listing that I thought that I met really well and I made sure they were different. So I had like eight good talking points. And then I had a list of like four to eight questions, depending on the place of like, um, you know, whatever after interview questions that I wanted to ask. So that way I could, while on the phone, just flick, you know, down the sheet and I could even take like a quick note. And if you needed a second to think, you could be like, I'm so sorry. I, I was taking notes during this. Um, yeah. And that gives you a good like 15 seconds that make you look really prepared of like, oh, wow, she's taking notes on this interview. But also <laughs> it gave you 15 seconds to think about what you were going to say because you weren't prepared. And to the point of being prepared, <laughs> there's um, I've totally taken over the live stream. This is Nicole. I love it. Now. I love it so much. It's all um, so good. <laughs> there is. I, I really dislike it, but it works. It's called the STAR method. I think it's S-T-A-R-R. -R, and I don't remember what it stands for. But uh, basically, it is a way, yeah, the STAR method of interviewing. One R. I was wrong. But um, 
basically situation, task, action, and result. So it breaks down every experience you've ever had into four little bullet points. And this way, during the interview, if Jasmine's like, tell me about a time, you know, where you encountered a challenge, and that's every workplace ever, no matter how good it was, something went wrong. So the situation is that um, once for me at the vet, the internet went down, and the task I had to do was check in people online. So that was a problem. So the action I took was to hotspot off of my phone while they were panicking in the back, trying to pull up all of our digital notes. And the result was that check in went twice as fast as the back trying to figure out what the notes were going on. So I was the only functioning part of the hospital for three hours. <laughs> Cool. And that that was how I dealt with the challenge of not having internet for a completely online check-in system. Um, but it, it kind of takes what could be, like, I could have gone on a really rambling story about that three-hour experience. And if you're, if you're wordy like me, it, it keeps you contained. <laughs> but if you have issues describing the situation, it gives you four bullet points to check off. And then you know you gave a good example. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't speak for hiring people, but I, I think that having four checkpoints, you're like, wow, she, you know, really took control of the situation and you know, it gives it gives you points to follow along with. That is fantastic. Can I just tell you how much I adore you? <laughs> you are like, you you are so fantastic. Listen, the the coolest thing about this that that you even are referencing a couple of different really important points here, which is that most of us have already heard that question. If you've interviewed the question that Nicole referenced, if you are going into interviews and haven't looked up questions that they're going to ask oh. you for you to rehearse <laughs> your answers in some way, and just like Nicole's point. You sh it shouldn't be the first time that you've told this story, right? And yeah. I say that even from the perspective of it might not, it might be the very first interview, but you should have already told a couple of your friends or other people for their input on like the way you answered that question or delivered it. Like make sure that you're rehearsing the interview process because most of us as hiring mentors do not have a lot of time. If you're going through a screening call, which pretty much every company does this, including us. I don't, I don't call my first hires. Nicole came in by, by reference. Okay. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll we'll talk about this. Yeah, later. exactly. Nicole by, came in by reference. Other people that have been, have applied. I don't, I'm not the first person that they speak with because I don't want to be on the call and I don't want to answer the questions if I'm not sure that this is the right fit. Right. So someone else that calls and asks four questions. Right. And those four questions are pretty straightforward, but it gives them a really great understanding of whether or not this individual is the right candidate to move to the next level. All right. So you have to be quick because those screening calls, I ask for them to spend no more than 10 to 15 minutes for those screening calls. So if you got asked a question during the screening call and you took like 20 minutes and that was the first question, they're, like, they're going to be like, okay, thanks. Have a good day. Like they're not even going to continue. Okay. So it's really important to understand what, like the, that this is, there is a methodology that you are trying to apply that everyone else in the job market has perfected in some, in some place. And you can find that information very easily. We are blessed to live in a world where we're not having to go to the library like I was when I was jobs. This is how long ago it's been. <laughs> and I'm borrowing like resume books and like, you know, trying to figure out interview questions. It wasn't Google, like Google, uh, Google didn't have everything back then. Now it's like you put anything in Google and you can literally find what you're looking for. So you need to have these questions kind of worked out, especially the ones that are like the top 10 questions that are that are asked in most interviews because most of us hiring managers we are going to google too <laughs> either we're going to google to try to add to like we're bored with our same questions we want something more interesting or something else to help us kind of like work through the kinks and what we've what we've been asking maybe we didn't really like the last set of candidates right so we're we're trying to diversify our line of questioning as well so you you can have an advantage where you are going directly to the source where majority of the questions that these um, hiring managers are asking, get those questions and just workshop what your answers will be. Rehearse them with people. Like maybe even put them out into the Facebook group. Be like, hey guys, this is my answer. Or like make a video. Like, what do y'all think about this answer? Is it too long? Is it too short? Whatever. Like ask for people's advice. There's no reason why you're going in there like blind and have never told and never told a soul your story that you just shared about working in the vet <laughs> for someone to say that was really great and very quick and you know concise response. 
So. If you haven't held any of your friends or family hostage and made them sit through 10 to 15 like interview questions, you're not interviewing hard enough. If you don't yeah. show up at like your friends, your parents, your partner's house, and you're like, hey, I know we said we were going to dinner, but before you get in my car, you have to interview me for 10 minutes, then... <laughs> I You're not that. prepared enough. <laughs> exactly. Negotiating. They're like, hey, I know that you wanted to hang out tonight, but <laughs> here's the prerequisite for our hang. <laughs> I like it. I think it helps that, that Nicole does D&D. So <laughs> um, let me see. I am 100% remote. I'm just going to see. Am I allowed to sleep? Allowed to go to mm. Dallas remote? Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. Like, I think it's fantastic because there are days like those of us who have family that come into town where you're like, your house is full <laughs> and like your perfect work environment might have people sleeping in it. Right, Nicole? <laughs> or like, they're like yeah. the guest or something like that, that you're like, okay, it would really be cool if I could work in this office, but I don't have space today because I've got, you know, five family members sleeping over or whatever. So, you know, you end up like wanting to have um have this option to go into the office so yeah this That's will it. be me next month because this is the guest room so <laughs> i completely understand getting evicted from your own office yeah it's like all right it was nice <laughs> we're borrowing your workspace for a while let's see my employer also allows us to travel nice that's fun yeah that's fantastic that is fantastic i love it let's see i have a medical billing including uh start from the local I wonder if should my resume. Yes. Yeah, so, um, okay. Is it Renee? 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 I hope I'm saying that right. Renee? I hope I'm saying that right. Okay. Um, so, yes, you absolutely. Okay. The question is, what are you looking to apply for is, is my first thought. You know, if you're in, you're looking to work as an admin in a practice, then you can tailor the medical billing experience that you got from that training the, the typically it's revenue cycle right they're training you on front end and back end right they're gonna they've probably taught you something related to the administrative side right so i would make sure that you have those skills listed underneath the, don't just put um that you have this degree i would actually put bullets there that say what you learned that is, is um, related to the admin jobs that you're applying to. So um, looking at those job listings and modifying your resume to match what the majority of them state, don't lie, right? No, we're not lying, but <laughs> we're saying like, okay, I took my Ben Medical Billing and Coding from my community college. And yeah, we trained on, you know, front desk collections and co-pays and deductibles and, you know, how to engage with patients and scheduling patients and things like that. Most of those programs have the front end of the revenue cycle as well as the back end of the revenue cycle. So it's important that you are highlighting the relevant experience under that part of your resume even if you think that the actual um, certification isn't relevant, you probably have relevant training that you could highlight on the applicate on the resume. Do you have anything to add to that, Nicole? I, I thought you summarized that pretty well. Um, yeah, it definitely depends on what job you're trying to get, and you know, if if like you're trying to get medical admin experience, then um, kind of like we said earlier, or I guess I said earlier, <laughs> um, framing it. Uh, I, I know a lot of people hate cover letters and they are annoying, but I, I used to be someone who loved writing papers in school because I felt like it was just so much easier than taking a test. Um, purely because it has a formula. So you just, you know, you start it with, hi, I'm Renee and I'm, you know, certified and, you know, you list why you're awesome. And then the next thing is you would probably list the things that you might not have, but you're hoping to have. So like, I don't yet have medical admin experience, but uh, maybe you did front end work uh, if you did retail. That's kind of similar, like checking people in you know, for, for their own interviews or whatever, you know, you dealt with people as they were waiting, you know, in line, you can kind of like stretch some of your experience and say that you're uh, looking forward to kind of the opposite of our advice earlier of you're looking forward to dealing with the front end and more customer experience rather than you're hoping to get more back end. Just kind of tailoring, this is what I have. This is what I want. This is how it'll work for both of us. It's, it's, it's really a negotiation. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. I think that's great advice there because most people don't think about like the relevant information or the experience that they have from their prior um, positions, right? There are a lot of positions that have, to Nicole's point, like customer service that if you're looking to work in the front end of a practice, even in, even in the back end of billing, there's customer service if you're speaking to patients or taking calls, things like that, right? So you can pick out those things and like just build on them, just like Nicole was saying. I mean, I, I would make sure that you are trying to read between the lines a lot more <laughs> and like trying to kind of say, okay, how do I take this and really blend it in with my experience? If you feel confident enough to apply for the position, then I'm, I'm hopeful that you can be able to communicate some of that from your experience, um, from by kind of like shifting around the experience. Linda, I just put the link down. Um, so it's Fiverr is what Nicole said earlier, which is the, um, the site that she mentioned that folks can, you can pay them for um, helping to build your resume. There are you can hire someone on Fiverr for so many things. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's probably someone up there that could give you interview questions or give you answers or whatever. There's probably some, there's something out there. There's someone out there doing literally everything on Fiverr. <laughs> and a lot of the reason why it's called Fiverr was because when it first came out, you, you could spend $5 on all of it. Um, now it, there's different, most people have different gigs, I think is what they call it. And, you know, some of them are $5 for like the base basic one. And then you might add a couple, another five or $10 for the next level. So check it out. It's totally a great resource. Um, last topic. Let me see. So let's see. Indeed has a coding assessment. Yes. Yeah, they do. They, they have, have all assessment. sorts of assessments. It is, it is nuts. Yeah. Um, I do like, so indeed they have to be assigned to you, I believe. I don't think that you can just take things and it'll sit on your profile like a LinkedIn does. But uh, when I got when I got really sad and was or, uh, applying for way, way too long, um, I went through and did as many like LinkedIn assessments as I could. So it looked like I was trying to play like Pokemon on LinkedIn. I had like, got to catch them all, got to get all the badges, <laughs> anything that I had any interest in and thought might come up. I had so many like uh, customer service certifications. It was nuts. <laughs> and I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I you guys know this about me, like, like if you're interested, do all the things. If it's not going to cost you anything but a little bit of your time, what's the harm, right? If it gives people an understanding that you are tenacious, right? Like tenacity is a great quality. Tenacity is a great quality. LinkedIn also has like groups where you can join, like not just, um, you know, like you can follow in Lara and in Lara University on there, but you can also join groups of um, like if you're really into editing, they have editing groups. If you're into um, graphic design, they have graphic design groups. And so you can kind of use that to network a little better. I feel like even though LinkedIn's supposed to be for networking, it's kind of difficult to because either you're just sending things randomly and hoping people will like answer and friend you, mm -hmm. or you have to spend so much time like going to a company page and digging through their posts and finding people who work there you start to feel like a private investigator <laughs> or like a little creepy so finding a group of like hi you're editors i would like to be one of you how how did you get into editing or somewhere like um the medical billers network on facebook where people can network and <laughs> help, help each other out you guys are all the time posting about work questions or how did you guys get this certification what did you guys do so that's awesome to see you guys like connect and you know have have that community yeah exactly precisely the community factor and it goes back to what we were talking about earlier it's all in the networks all who you know most of us are building like nicole um we were chatting about how you know we kind of came together and nicole was this goes back to something i mentioned earlier nicole was hoping to take on a role that was not even related to Inlara. Those of you who know have know I have a, a completely separate business, <laughs> not at all related directly to healthcare. It's it's well we'll call it wellness. Um, it's a yoga concept, um, and she was thinking that that was what she was going to be great at. And I'm like, I think that you would be really great at this. And she was like, 
I don't know anything about healthcare, <laughs> but like, you know, I worked at a vet. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I see something in this. I think that I think you would be great at this. And so literally there were there was like one gal who thought she would be great at, at healthcare that inter- and then Nicole thought she would be great at the yoga. And I literally thought they both matched <laughs> and that and it worked out beautifully. They're you know, you guys are both two of my favorite hires that I've ever made. So um so yes, I absolutely would say that if you are applying for a position and you think that maybe that job is kind of down your lane, you think that it's the, the maybe the perfect position for you, but the hiring manager is like, you know what? Like I'm looking at your skills and we're having this conversation and here's what I think is better for you. Be open to the possibility of someone seeing your talents <laughs> more clearly than you because that happens to all of us. Like most of us are like, oh, like you, like I, this happened to me with that. You guys are seeing me on here on, on this, this digital stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so uncomfortable with camera. When I first started, I hated the way that, and everyone's like, oh, you have like a, you have like a natural gift. Like you're, and I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> that was my first was like, yeah, or whatever. Until you hear it enough. And you're like, oh, I guess I, I guess I'm pretty okay at that. Like, you know, it starts kind of helping you to see your own potential. So it's easier for people to see it more clearly often than you can. So value that insight and that opinion and be open to the possibility that even though you thought that was the perfect position for you, it very well could be that this other role that they're offering you that you're like, Ooh, I didn't really think that I would like that. You, you could wake up, you know, a few, few weeks from now and love the job that you got hired to do. So be open to the fact that, okay, you might've gotten this degree with this perfect label of what you thought you were going to be in this hospital system or practice, what have you. And now you're like, wait a minute, I'm now in this other role that I would have never imagined. So I love it. Um, all right. I think I'm, we're going to need to wrap up here. You guys <laughs> late. Um, I was just looking at some of, I feel like this has been a really great conversation. You guys let us know in the comments if there's something, if you want us to continue the conversation, because we didn't get to all of our points. It was like so many great <laughs> discussion points and Nicole, <laughs> Nicole, I'm like, I'm looking at my list. I'm like, yes, I'm looking at my list. I'm like, three more on my side. Most of the things that Jasmine and I thought we were going to cover did not come up at all. <laughs> yeah. But I think you guys let us know what your thoughts are. If you liked this topic and you want us to talk about it again, we would love to, to make sure that we are talking, you know, speaking to the things that you need the most support in. Um, I am gonna, there's some other questions that came up. Um, but I'm, I'm not gonna, we're gonna skip over those for next time. Um, yeah, and I think we're gonna start wrapping up here cause it's late. So my friends, thank you so much for being here. Nicole, I love it when you're here. I love not talking to myself for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have another human. <laughs> So thank you for your presence and you have, can we all say thank you to Nicole for the gems <laughs> that she dropped in here because she really did. She dropped such great gems and like, I love hearing both sides of it. Cause as I said, I've been hiring for a long time. I have not been on the other side in a minute. So, um, yeah, really. Aww, appreciate thank it. you. Yeah. Thank you. You're for all so good. kind. <laughs> thank you for being such a nerd. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it. All right, my friends, we will see you next week. I don't remember what the topic is next week at the moment, but Nicole will make sure we get um, that announcement out there. If you have not already joined the Facebook group, make sure that you do. We have a lot of fun stuff coming down the pike. Um, Keep an eye out because we are going to be dropping the next Medical Billers um, meetup link soon. That comes through Zoom, and it is a Zoom meetup link that you're going to want to apply for, meaning like put yourself in there. It's not like a ap- big application process. We just need you to fill out the register is the word, I guess. You need to register for it so that we know what group you want to be in when we are on um, that meetup. It is a live Zoom session. Um, and am I missing anything else right now, Nicole? What other? I think that's about it. If we forgot anything, I'm sure we'll bring it up next week. And if we didn't get to your questions yet, we probably won't answer them next week because we already have that planned, but it will be coming up. We promise we have a whole bank of all your questions. So let us know if you have anything that you want us to talk about in the comments. (laughs) Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Nicole. Nicole, you're the bomb.com. I appreciate you. Everyone else have a beautiful rest of your evening and a lovely weekend. We will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye friends.